morning, good morning, everybody. That's better. I think I was sideways before. Something wasn't working right on the phone. So, we are going to talk about a very important topic today. We are going to talk about how our faith arsenal needs to be part of our preparedness um, mindset. Good morning, Tammy. And my question for you guys today is, what gives makes you fearful and makes you worry on a fairly regular basis? Um, that is today's question. For those of you that are not familiar with myself and my family, my name is Tammy Treyer. I am an author of How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle as well as the Treyer Wilderness Cookbook and I was also a, a collaborator on um, Courage Under Siege, all of which can be found on Amazon by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer. And you can find myself and my family and our story and our educationals at treyerwilderness.com as well as our uh, classes at treyerwildernessacademy.com. We live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho and we educate on our lifestyle, uh, the skills, traditional skills, primitive skills that we utilize here on our homestead on a daily basis. We are sharing with others and trying to educate others to be prepared and that's why our topic is so important today in my opinion. Again, our topic is going to be your faith arsenal and why it should be part of your preparedness mindset. And the question again for today is what causes you to be fearful and to worry? in life and that's something that we really need to consider and really really think about now I want to share a couple things with you before we delve into that um, it is our hunting season right now out here in northern Idaho and the mountain boy still has us all skunked he got his buck white-tailed buck and he got a uh, bull elk last week so um, benefits to that for us is that we have non-gmo healthy meats um, a deer provides us with about a month of food, about 28 meals is what we got out of his buck, including the heart and the liver. And um, uh, his elk is giving us about two months worth of food. So really, really phenomenal um, way to fill your freezer, fill your canning shelves. I got 14 quarts of um, white-tailed deer venison on my shelf from his buck. I think I showed you that last week and uh, good stuff going on. I got out last night and had such a fantastic experience. I love when this stuff happens. Unfortunately, there, I couldn't shoot anything, but just to experience these things in the wild is just amazing. Uh, I was out walking. I decided to do a walking hunt versus sitting in a stand or a blind or just finding a stump to sit on. I just felt like last night uh, was a good time to just stroll around. So I walked about four miles, uh, and that's some good exercise because when you're walking four miles really slowly and very carefully, it works muscles that you don't normally work uh, because you're usually at a different clip. I am at least. But um, and and just um, the things you see. So I'm walking and. Um, I had just gone through a lot of garbage. We have what I call the scrub oaks. Um, folks back east will know what I mean by that. Um, just a lot of low brush that's hard to get through in a quiet fashion. So I just felt like I was, uh, you know, like a train going through the wild, uh, making a lot of racket, and got into a little open clearing, and I was going through there really slowly. And good morning, Terry. And I look up and I saw the outline of ears. So there was a little calf standing. Uh, to my benefit, I was on a little bit of a rise. They were down below grazing. So it saw me and I stopped and just stared at it. It's really good when that when those situations happen if you can squint your eyes so you're you're when they make eye contact, that's when fear sets in. So I had my hat down. I obviously they couldn't see my eyes. They couldn't smell me either, and it knew something wasn't right, so it kind of hopped off, and then the next calf came and and sort of did the same thing, and then Mama appeared, and uh, I was 50 yards away from them, and it was just amazing. 
she felt uncomfortable or saw something out of the ordinary and stared at me good and then turned broadside and just stood there and went back to grazing. So it ended up that I got to see the two calves and six cows all do the same thing to me. I was standing there for a good long while and then got to watch them slowly parade off, all standing broadside. I could have shot every single one of them, but there weren't any bulls. Our cow season ended last Wednesday. So today is our last day of uh, elk season, so I will be getting back out later today and hope to see a bull that I can uh, take down for our family's uh, freezer. So, but just to experience that, I mean, they were that close. That was just phenomenal. I just love experiencing those things in the wild and uh, instantly thank God for the opportunity to, to see that. You know, I'm always seeing my hearts out there and, and unique things in the woods, but that's always a really neat experience to be that close to a, such a big animal. Even the cows or the calves, you know, are the size of a, a cow, uh, a moo cow, if you will. So it was just a neat experience. Oh, thank you. Tammy says she's praying for a good elk hunt. And thank you. Me too. <laughs> and the nice thing is with our deer season, our deer season goes into like the last week of November, beginning of December. So I like to hunt in the snow. Um, just a really neat experience for me. I love early elk uh, archery season and uh, deer archery season and then I love to be able to get out in the snow plus it's not so populated with hunters so it's a real nice quiet peaceful hunt that I don't have to worry about somebody shooting at me because there's so many people all over so I'm looking forward to that later um, although um, last night I just had this feeling I was going to be able to shoot my deer on the way out and my elk on the way back which would have been really awesome if that happens you're going to hear me howling from wherever you are <laughs> but my question of you for today is what makes you fearful and what makes you worry? And uh, I wanted to talk about this because uh, this year has been an interesting year for us. We've had a lot of really awesome miracles and then we've had some really incredible um, things that have taken us to the you know to our knees. And last night is no exception. We got some really bad news or what could be received as really bad news. Um, I have not let it ruin my resolve. And I want to teach you guys how to do that. Uh, it's a process. I used to worry about everything. I used to worry. Oh, I did. I worried about everything. I remember 10 years ago when we got here, um, my web design business is what afforded us to be able to do this because as long as I had an internet connection, I could work from anywhere. And I remember while we were building, just constantly worrying that we'd have enough money to pay things and, and you know, that things were going to go okay. And But money was always something that I worried about. <clears throat> and my children. I mean, once you give birth, I think that's just like an instant... Uh, on button that you worry about your children. Tammy says, biggest worry is always money, but God has been faithful. And he always is, Tammy. It's really amazing. You know, I always say it that worry and fear is a waste. And I've learned that greatly over the last three years, over the last eight years. But I'm not sure. I have to think really about this where um, that turned off for me with, with worrying, um, because I know that I've been in, in, at really great peace here. Um, it's hard not to be. Our environment is just really awesome. But I, I believe, I guess the guess way, the best way for me to say that is that through the years here, my faith and my trust in God has grown so much stronger. And, and don't get me wrong. There are days where suddenly worry sets in and I feel it. And I also realize what it is, and I tell the enemy to go pound sand and go back where he belongs, because that is where that is coming from. And when you start to learn and connect the dots on those two things, it really makes an amazing difference. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. When it comes to your preparedness things, so food. You have a list of the things that you need to be prepared, um, what you need to feed your family. You have water. You have a list of medical needs that you might have. So you have lists and you have things in your mind that you're constantly thinking about and that you can turn to and review, right? I'm sure many of you do. I do. So why don't we have something for faith? Because there's many levels of our faith 
that we need to be prepared for and that we need to um, be on the ready. And today's topic is just one of the many, many. But fear and worry um, are something that I hear so many people, especially right now, that although they may not feel that they're doing that, and they feel that they're strong, their words speak a different story. And I am guilty of that a couple weeks ago because I, was, I didn't feel like I was worried or that I was being fearful. My struggle was that I was making the right choice, that we have decisions to make. Um, today, or since yesterday, we have some extreme choices to make that will make a huge impact on our future within, the, within a very short period of time. So making those decisions, you know, we can, we, I was just worried that I would make the wrong decision. I wasn't worried about anything else, just that of my own choices, but that's still, still fear and worry. Now I want to ask you something. Um, when we work muscles in our, um, our body and we're working out, we are strengthening those muscles, correct? Well, what happens when we do that with courage? We are strengthening that muscle. So the more we work at this, the better off we will be. I just heard someone pull in here. So this may um, either get really miscombobbled or... I can just keep going, but um, if I have to shut this off, I will jump back on. With the hunting, uh, we have uh, friends that come in and out if they need help, so um, maybe the mountain boy is taking care of this. If not, um, I may need to go, but I'll be back. So the thing is, the more we work out, good morning, Chad, no matter if it's our faith muscles or whether it's our bodies. We are strengthening ourselves, and so often we forget to strengthen our faith muscles, and it's really important. Courage is huge. Fear and worry are truly... Okay. I'm going to finish this. Stay with me. I'm going to jump back on here, okay? Okay, let's do part two. I'm sorry about that, guys, that were watching me. Um, we have to do this in two segments today because I had unexpected guests arrive and my house erupted with dogs. So um, we are talking about your faith arsenal and the importance of that in, in preparedness. Hello again, Chad. <laughs> okay, and hello again, Tammy. Now, that divine interruption had purpose. Look what I got. This is hot... Um, sausage uh, from friends of ours and we exchanged he blessed me with this and I blessed them with some hot sauce so we are blessed with wonderful people in our lives yes part two <laughs> and there's the mountain boy you're gonna be rude and not even say hello Hi. yeah <laughs> so anyway I know isn't that nice I was so excited what a what a nice divine interruption and what wonderful people thank you David and it was so nice to meet his mother today beautiful woman she's in her 70s and what a beautiful beautiful woman inside and out real excited to meet new people always what are you doing Lila I've got helpers I've got one here there what tell everybody tell them uh, all right are you done now are you done stealing the show Okay, this is just going to be a day of interruptions. So here we go. I'm going to try to get back on track here. We were talking about um, our courage muscles and our faith muscles. Uh, when you build uh, your muscles in your body, you strengthen them. And that's what we need to do by con constantly and consciously working on our faith muscles. And one of the ways I want to encourage you guys to do that is to start using Evernote or a notebook or your journal and include in there um, verses that you can go to and have on the ready to enable you to um, turn to when situations arise. So today we're talking about fear and worry. So I provided in the description below a list of verses that you can copy and paste and put in your journal. Are you going out to saw firewood? Yes. Be safe.
Can I put a bottle of wash in and wash? Um, I can, or... I'll throw that in when I'm done here. Okay. 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 Be safe. Catch you later. Okay. Like I said, lots of interruptions today, but we're going to keep going. Okay. So copy and paste those and keep them handy. And um, turn to these things because, you know, it's like anything else. If When you're in that place and you've got to search for something, you're not going to search for it or you're not going to turn to it as quickly and, and scour for things. But if you have something on the ready that you can flip open and just start reading, it's, it's no different than having a medical or herbal book on hand that you do the same thing with, correct? That's part of your preparedness mindset. So why should this not be the same, correct? Now, I want to read this to you. This is from Sunday, and it is extremely powerful in my eyes, and I thought I would share. It says, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, Psalms 56.3, okay? Personalize God's promises. Underlying your deepest fears are thoughts. They may be expressed publicly or entertained privately. Either way, you must arrest them and change them. As I said in the other um, video, when I feel fear setting in, I know it's the enemy, and I tell him to go pound sand, and I tell him to go back where he came from, and instantly I can walk away from that situation, and that will not stir back up in me, and sometimes that doesn't work right away, but when you pull out your arsenal of verses, it will, but you need to discern between what's happening and what's the enemy and, and what's not the enemy. God is not going to put negative thoughts in your head, guys, so remember that. So now... One of the most powerful weapons God has given you for conquering fear and worry is the ability to personalize his promises. Here are just a few. Don't be afraid. You are mine. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, the flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. How powerful is that, guys? How powerful. He's always there. And what should your response to God's promise be? I will be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. I will not be afraid, neither will I be dismayed, for the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. The Lord's eye is upon me because I fear him, and because I trust in his mercy and loving kindness. When I am tempted to have a fearful and hasty heart, I will say to myself, be strong, fear not, my God will come and save me. These are all promises God has given us and these are promises that are there for us so don't dismiss them the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear when trouble comes he will hide me he will set me on a high rock out of reach of all of my enemies then i will sing his praises with much joy do you want to overcome your fears and worries i imagine you do right well personalize god's promises for yourself and take these words and trust in them and have great faith. Guys, um, when our situation is over and we share some additional things with you, I know your eyes will be opened to some amazing um, abilities to have trust and faith. And I know that through this journey, we've been sharing this with you regularly. I know that if you put the same trust and faith in God, the same things will happen for you. Building on those faith muscles and those trust muscles and building courage is so powerful. It is such an amazingly peaceful feeling when you have that trust and faith and strength and know that everything is going to be good. When you are comforted and have that extreme comfort and peace, even in the midst of heartbreaking to your knees kind of stuff. And I'm just grateful that um, I recognized and learned and am always learning and still growing in my faith, but that I know how to embrace this and how to help myself and get myself out of these places. Hello again, Terry. So I want to encourage you guys to record these verses. And like it says, personalize it. 
you know, we go through all kinds of different things and we worry often about all kinds of different things. Sometimes our worries are specific, but you got to remember that God promised us he is, is that he is always there. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will help us through everything. All we need to do is call into him. Hello, Daniel. And, and pull into him and speak to him and have a relationship with him. And that relationship is no different than um, building our, our strength and faith and courage muscles is building that relationship. You know, I talked earlier in the year about um, building new habits. The more you do something, the more you create a habit. Well, guys, that's what this is like. You know, you want to work out and, and reshape your body. And you do it every day and you strive and you push. Why wouldn't you want to do that with your faith muscles? And why wouldn't you want to do that with God? Why wouldn't you want to make that relationship and those tasks a habit? It's amazing. It's amazing. I, I cannot function. I've learned that. When I was on vacation and I told you guys how you know things were at a different pace and things were different and trying to keep a routine was hard you always have that when when your um, routine is disrupted or when there's people other people um, visiting and things and I'll tell you what I didn't realize how disheveled I was until afterwards and I don't want to let those things um, I don't want my life to end up being disheveled I don't want to end up in a disheveled state because of my lack of of um, efforts. I have to take that time and I have to to spend that time every day in the Word, with God, and, and I am determined to uh, strengthen all my faith muscles. Daniel says, hello my friend, faith is the proof before the results. Amen. Amen. Very much so. Jackie, good to have you. Oop, let's see. Jackie says, oh, I'm going over the camera. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. Amen. And Mimi says, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Yahweh. I can't see that. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God who is worth all praise. Amen. Amen. You know, guys, when you finally get to that point where you realize that God is all of those things and that God is, God is it, everything else kind of comes together. It, you know... Our life sucks. I will be the first to say it. Our life absolutely sucks right now. But you know what? I am refusing to allow my circumstances to define me. I am refusing to allow my circumstances to um, interfere with my day. I love life. I love God. I love my family. And I know the enemy is doing everything in his power to try to break us to the point that it's funny. That as soon as something good happens, no sooner than that good happens, something comes our way, whether it's an email or a phone message or whatever, and it's just so amazing how quickly and how fast the enemy is trying to just sink our ship. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to allow that. And, and that's part of this faith muscle and learning to look at faith as part of our preparedness and that we can build our faith to a level that when we are in a suffer in a valley when we're suffering that he doesn't have a the enemy doesn't have a chance to get a hold and and our our valley may continue but our resolve is not broken and that is important because guys in a for real survival preparedness situation do you know how powerful that is that's huge. And in life, it's just as huge. Awesome, Tammy. She said same thing here. Now, being that I got a little disrupted there, um, again, my question to you guys today is what makes you fearful and what makes you worry? And if you don't want to announce that and put that in the comments, write it down for yourself. Because once you write it down and you acknowledge it and you realize it, my old dog, the healer, is on the plywood. I can't stand the beams in the way. He sees the plywood and thinks it's like a disrupted blanket or something, so he scratches it. He might do that for a while. So that's what that crazy noise is. But um, it's just so important that we acknowledge what gives us fear. We acknowledge the enemy seeping in. You know, I always talk to you about the still small, the still small voice of God. One of the important things is that we acknowledge his voice. I'm going to read today's to you because this was something also that I thought was really, it, it pertains to what I just said. 
I love this devotional and I love reading the devotional, but then I also love just getting absorbed in his word. Um, we talked about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit plays a huge role in our walk and in our faith walk and knowing that the Holy Spirit is nudging us, um, whether it's to step away from something that is bad and that would be sinful and that would be wrong for us to do and we know it and it's nudging and we don't listen, you know, or whether it's the Holy Spirit nudging us towards something good. The Holy Spirit does both. And it, the Holy Spirit is there to keep us in line. And it's um, our personal connection with God. So I just think this is pretty interesting. And there's also some other parts to this that will apply to some of the other things we've talked about in the past. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit, the plus factor. Why would we describe the Holy Spirit as the plus factor? Three reasons. The Holy Spirit determines the gifts and skills you receive. We've talked about the gifts and skills and what we are meant to be and do. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. All right, Lila. So, if you feel like a square peg in a round hole, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what your gifts are. Then ask Him to open the door and give you favor with the right people. He'll do it. All right. Two, the Holy Spirit knows where you belong. The Bible says, They being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia. Where you are matters. For example, if you are a whale, you were born to swim in the ocean. If you are a bird, you were born to fly in the air. During a famine, God sent Elijah to the brook of Sherith, saying, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. If Elijah had decided he'd rather stay where he was, he would have missed his miracle. You don't have to do anything to experience God's love, but you must know his voice and follow his direction to experience his blessings. Three, the Holy Spirit can be offended. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. When a dove returns to its nest, it won't land if the nest is out of order. So ask God to make you more conscious of the presence of his precious Holy Spirit and make your heart a place where he always feels at home. I just thought that was pretty interesting, you know, that we need to hear that voice. We need to hear that voice. We need to get accustomed to that voice so that when you know that voice above and beyond anything else, so that when the enemy is whispering those nasty negative things in your head, in your ear, um, causing you to doubt, causing you to fear, causing you to worry, that you know those are the enemy. Anything negative, he is here to kill, steal, and destroy. I say it all the time. But I really want to see us all building on our faith arsenal for our preparedness aspects of life. Because, as I stated, it could be a lifesaver in a true, for real survival situation. Where do we get our strength from? Where do we focus? What, what are we pulling into? You know, all of that matters, and all of that builds on us. It builds our strength, our courage, all of that. And we need to be willing to acknowledge when we are not pulling into the right stuff and when we are allowing the enemy to whisper in our ears and we stay on our knees in fear, not in praising. Diana says, hello, Diana. Um, the name of the devotional is actually a freebie from my church. You can um, access it online. Um, it is the word, the word, yeah, I'm sorry, the word for you today. Okay. And I looked this up last week and I forget, I think it's the word, wordforyou.com. So you can access the devotionals online. You can also request to get a copy, I believe as well. But this is really awesome. If you have struggles reading the Bible or understanding the Bible, a good devotional is the next best thing. Being able to read something that is inspirational, that feeds your, your, um, soul and and your faith muscle is really important um i recommend the nlt version of the bible um the message is good also it's like reading a book i love how uh, todd white refers to the message as like the hippie version of the bible you know he always uh jokes about it saying dude you know but it's it's what works to you for you you can go to bible.com and you can switch all the different versions. Um, I like the NLT. I like HCSB. Um, 
I do like the King James Version. I like antiques. I like old things. I like traditional. So I love the words from the King James Version, but it's just hard for me to absorb and get with all the these and the thous. Um, just makes my mind a little funny. So for reading purposes, I do use the HCSB or the NLT. Um, great, great way to do things is to get on um, Bible.com and decide what works for you. I use the... Um, journaling Bible. Um, I just, I just went blank. I think it's in the description down below though. If I'm not mistaken, I do have it down below. And if it's not, I'll add it later. Um, but it's a journaling Bible. Um, and I'm totally going blank still on it. So anyway, check the description later or I'll add a comment with it in there. But guys, that's so important. The more we stay in the Word and the more we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, um, the more amazing life becomes because we are in tune, we are focused, and our courage muscles and our faith muscles just continue to be strengthened and built. And I think that that is really important because life is going to always be upside down. There's no promises for a great day ever. Um, it's what we make it. You know, I've been waking up and my legs are just so sore and my muscles are not doing what they're supposed to. I lost my strength again. I'm not sure why. Um, and I'm working on that. But one of the things that I have made a conscious effort to do is get out of bed regardless how I feel and say, you know what, today is going to be an awesome day. And you know what? It ends up being that. It's all perspective. It's all where we glean and pull our strength from, and it's what we focus on. So if you're focusing on negative things, you're going to breed negative things into your life. If you focus on positive things and learn to turn the negative into positive, it's a, it, you'll, you'll see a huge difference in your life. Thanks. I use a New King James Version Women's Study Bible, and it has great notes. Awesome. Awesome. You guys have to find what works for you. Honestly, that is a very true thing. You know, maybe the King James version is what works for you. And if that's what works for you, roll with it. Um, I just, I personally struggle with it. Um, but finding the Bible that works for you, finding groups of people too. Um, I, I tend to be a homebody. I love the comforts of my home, my wilderness. Um, I struggle health-wise going out into public, so it just makes it nice. But I do find that it is really um, fulfilling to spend some time with people sometimes. Isn't that an amazing thing? <laughs> um, and this is something that's very good for me. Interacting with you guys and getting your feedback and your input too is very powerful for me as well. Helps me that I, when I am here all the time. But being with good groups of people is also important. Who you are surrounding yourself with is really important. And if you can get together once a week or every two weeks or once a month with good quality people that... that um, fill voids in, in you. Um, it's very powerful and very helpful. And, um, when you can have those people there, those same people that, you know, you can ask for prayer and you will get them and just, uh, to have a, a powerful resource of people is really important. We have some amazing prayer warriors that we call upon all the time. And I mention it in every video. If you need prayers, please don't ever hesitate to ask for them while we are live. I have tremendous prayer warriors that are joining me today. Daniel, Chad, Tammy, uh, Jackie, Terry. Um, it's amazing. We have a good firm group of people here. If your um, prayer request is something that you'd rather not disclose, ask for prayer without any necessary information being added. We don't need to know. God knows. But if you need prayers and you need support, you've got it. You can always email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. I wanted to mention a couple things to you guys today. Um, with our situation, our situation is financial. I'm not sure yet, but I might be moving these live videos to Patreon because we have to cover our operational um, uh, requirements, our, our, our bills to keep us up and running and doing this. And um, I may need to switch over to patreon.com to do the live videos. Um, it'll be as little as $3 a month, a um, dollar a month to join us over there. These live videos will be under the $3 a month 
Um, but that will help us greatly to keep our operational expenses covered during this time. Um, I've been putting off doing this, but I think it's necessary for us to do that. And I want to create a community that uh, we have the ability to talk about whatever we want to and not be um, censored, not be... Um, busted in by trolls and I will say this we have an amazing Facebook community and I'm really proud of the community we have because it's really good spirited people and the people that may not agree are not chiming in and adding their uh, negativity um, so I'm really thankful for that but I did want to put that out there so if you haven't joined us at Patreon you can go over to patreon.com slash Treyer Wilderness and join us over there um, I will let you know when that officially is going to switch over but right now I'm going to keep things going as best we can here and share things. And I wanted to share a couple things with you. Um, we've been busy in my spare time. Actually, sometimes when I'm listening to the Bible, um, the Bible app that I use allows me to play the chapter so I can listen to it, which is awesome. So it allows me to do mindless things while I'm listening and it enables me to concentrate. If you recall me stating earlier about doodling, um, in the year I had said when it's a proven fact that when you doodle, you, you hear and receive and, and um, are able to learn things better. Well, I'm finding that while I'm working on my projects that the same thing is true. When you're doing something creative, it enables you to focus better. So I've been making moccasins. These are, this pair is stitched. I am, will need to stitch this shoe. Um, we had an order come in for a fellow who has extremely wide feet, and I made these to fill that order. Diane says, we've been looking for a homestead property in several different states for four plus years. The Lord has given us, hasn't given us direction yet. It gets weary at times, but we know he is faithful. The prayers of those here are much appreciated. Absolutely, girl. You can count on that. Um, Diana, we've been trying to sell our house, so I understand. And, and also, you know, guys, that brings up a really good point. Waiting on God's timing can be one of the hardest things people have to endure because his timing you have to trust. So there you're building your courage and your trust and your faith in him because his timing is always going to be better than ours. It's a given. It may not suit us, you know, and it may make things difficult, but um, it, is, it is a very powerful thing to learn that God is in control and that when he allows forward motion and things to happen, that it will be bigger and better than you have ever imagined it. So, Diana, you can count on prayers. And I see that Tammy and Chad have already been uh, chiming in here. Um, they are my tremendous prayer warriors. Um, good question, Chad. He asked, what states are you looking in? Okay, am I still live? Whew. Okay, a phone, a phone call came through there. So, um, it blanked my screen out. So, good question. What state are you looking in, Diana, if you're interested in sharing? Um, while you do that, I'm going to show you some other things here. The Mountain Man does amazing things, and we are hoping to turn our efforts this winter over to the products that we make and get us back to being home-based. She says, Georgia, where we live, Tennessee, Missouri, and New York. Grandkids are there. Okay. Good to know. Um, and are you looking for just a piece of land to build on, or are you looking for something that actually has a homestead already operating on it? This is something that the mountain man made me. This is from his metal shop. That is metal. And this is a rose that he made me for my birthday when um, I had my surgery. As you can see, he added the personal touch of the heart at the end. Um, so that was a personal gift, but this is, and this was also a gift to me, but something that he will be selling. That is a heart-shaped corkscrew that he made in the smithy as well. And I showed this a couple weeks ago when we were talking about guns, but he does amazing leather work. So we will be um, switching gears, I believe, here, um, at least hoping to. So we will see what God's plan is for us. Diane, uh, Tammy says, Diana, we lived in Missouri for 10 years. You can message me if you have questions. Awesome. Way to go, guys. I'm real excited about you guys interacting. That's perfect. This is something I made this week. I had another uh, phone pouch that I made really quick just to, um, 
take care of a need, a quick need, to give me something to keep my phone safe when I'm out in the woods. Because I carry my phone wherever I go because I'm constantly recording and taking photos. So this is the new one that I made. It has the rustic leather on it still, and it's just a little pouch. It has two um, straps in the back to attach to my belt. And just some of the stuff that we do here in our spare time for fun, for necessity. Um, and we will be getting our stores up and running um, very f Right now we have stores on both Etsy and on our website. You can go to treyerwilderness.com slash shop, and you can also go to treyerwilderness.com slash store. But um, there's a lot of the Mountain Man's products that are not on there because I did not have time to get them on, and that is what I'm working on right now. So being creative and inspired to be creative is part of... Um, I feel the more we pull into God and the more we ask Him to help us uh, remove the square peg round hole problem that many of us might have in knowing what we're meant to do, um, will help guide us and direct us to that path. And sometimes you may not realize, you know, that something that you've been desiring to try ends up being something that is uh, your your gift. And I'm finding, I, I have always had a leather fetish. I've loved the smell of leather. I've um, just always have been drawn to leather to purchase it, not necessarily to make things on my own. And over the last 15 years, I've been getting more involved in making things for myself. And I have a bunch of projects that I'm going to be working on. I have a pair of moose hide moccasins, and I'm probably going to put a beaver tail bottom on them. And we are just starting to go back to our traditional roots and doing traditional things, not just to do them, but to, um, to wear. So as we progress in these um, different things, we're going to continue to share that with you and also share how-tos and um, hopefully inspire you to embrace some of the things that you desire to do because I'm finding that while I'm listening to God's Word, I am able to do these things and um, I'm absorbing so much of God's Word, but I'm also just feeling so at peace and inspired and creative and I want to encourage you guys to enjoy that too. Tammy says, I love the things you all make. Thank you so very much. And I want to, like I said, I want to encourage you guys to embrace those things. It may not be making something with leather. It might be doing scrapbooking. It might be making cheese. It might be learning how to do herbals. But that's all part of our preparedness um, and our personal um, desires. And those are things that we put on shelves and put on back burners and should really be embracing because that could be the purpose of you having the nudge to do them. Maybe the Holy Spirit is nudging you because that is your your future gift. So don't discard those personal nudgings that you may be getting. If you continue to get nudged over something um, continually, there's a reason for that. So anyway, those are my thoughts for today. Those are what um, God prompted me with today to share with you. And I am reading a book that um, Starry Hilder suggested to me. I will share that with you next week. She is such a powerful Christian lady too. And it's just amazing to come in contact with people that you can see God is moving in, that you can see God's purpose in, and that you can um, that you can just see God shining through. I love that. Um, and all of you have that ability. All of you have shared things with me that have resonated and have shined God to me. So I know he's working in all of us. And it's really neat when you meet these new people that you know they have a purpose in your journey. And I believe that Starry and I um, are relating for a reason. We are walking parallel, going through um, valleys, but our, our struggles are different. And... Um, through our journeys, we are sharing powerful things that God is doing in our lives that are actually helping each other in our walk. So it's neat. And that's what I said when you can find powerful people, people that offer something to you that you really feel their presence and you feel the benefits of their presence. That's so important. So she shared this with me. Um, keys to passing your spiritual test. Once we were born again and are in Christ, we are more than conquerors and God always leads us to victory. There is nothing on this earth that we cannot overcome or endure with God. 
It does not matter what happened to you or what you are going through. If you are born again, you have the ultimate victory, which God has already provided through the cross. You are no longer a slave to sin, but a servant of righteousness. See Romans 6.18. Spiritual tests help us awaken to our true nature that was restored when God gave us a new birth. Spiritual tests help us to build our character and become strong in our spirit. Just so funny. What have I been saying? You know, it's just, it's amazing when, when you go through these things and you can feel God just nurturing you and, and, and you keep getting confirmation of the truth. So another thing I want to leave you with, this is always on my description, number 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. And um, just like Diana and, and our circumstances, and I'm sure many others out there, I know some of you are struggling with different things. And, you know, we want quick results. We want God's timing to be immediate. We want him to answer us and to, you know, tell us everything that's going to happen. But, you know, we aren't capable of handling all that at once. So he gives us things in bits and pieces. And he is hoping that he can build our faith muscles. And I want to encourage you to allow him to help mold you and um, help to to strengthen those muscles. So let this be like a, a series because as um, God nudges me on, on what I'm teaching and what I'm sharing, um, may it also help you. And I'm hoping that what I've shared today will strengthen you and help you too because I have found so much strength and, and uh, resolve and peace and comfort in my walk with him this year. And um, guys, this valley is a tough one. It's a very, very hard one. And our future as of today is um, unknown. Unknown. Things could happen really, really fast here. And um, we could end up without a home and end up in a winter situation where we are having to build something to live in. So um, the unknown is always there. But if you can have the peace and comfort that I do today in these circumstances, um, it's really, really powerful. Really, really powerful. And no matter what the circumstance, no matter what it is you're walking, that peace and comfort is there for you too. So pull into it, okay? I'm going to say a prayer. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this beautiful, gorgeous day, this day that you're going to just make wonderful for everyone watching and everyone watching the replay and Lord, I know that there are hurting, suffering, struggling people out there with marriages and finance and, and jobs and children. And I know the list goes on and on. And Lord, I just ask that you strengthen them, illness too, that you strengthen them in their, in their walk and that you give them the courage to continue to build and strengthen their faith muscles in you. And that you, through these live videos that I do, they keep getting more tools and resources for their arsenal and for their preparedness level um, in, in, in life and in their daily walk. And Lord, may they just pull into you. And Lord, I just ask that you strengthen them and give them the courage they need every day to get out of bed and to pull up their bootstraps and to just embrace the day knowing that there will be a miracle and just to, instead of looking at the doom and gloom and the fear and the worry that they pull into the miracle and look for the miracle that you're going to offer them. Because every day there's one. Regardless what it is, there's a miracle. It may be little, it may be big, but it's there. And Lord, I just ask that you help these people on their journey. May they find the right resources, the right people, the right tools. And, and may they continue to not only pull into you and, and learn to hear the Holy Spirit, but that they share. Without a test, there isn't a testimony. And without sharing the testimony, there's no light and, and love being shared to the rest of the world. And we need to be fearless and we need to share these stories and these uh, amazing miracles that happen in our lives so that we can touch others and teach them to do the same. And Lord, I just... 
ask that you keep everyone safe and healthy and a roof over their head and their bellies full. And Lord, just help all those that are struggling. Help those that are sick to be healed and to be strong and restrengthened. Be with Pat Kenny and just help him with his cancer and his heart. Lord, heal his heart and just uh, heal his, his mind and his cancer. May it be gone. And be with Deborah Kidd who is dealing with cancer also. Just help her on this journey. Strengthen her and keep her focused on you. And Lord, be with Diana and just help her and her family to find the perfect place to homestead. And be with all those that are watching. And, and Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. I know that what you're going to do is amazing. And I have full trust and faith in what you are going to do in your timing. And I just ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. So guys, I hope you've gained something from this. Diana says, I will be praying for you and your family. May the Lord show himself to you in ways you have never experienced before. That would be amazing. That'd be so amazing. I've experienced him talking to me and touching me and healing me. And it's just so amazing. And that's why I feel so strongly that I need to share my story, my testimony, my daily walk with you guys. Because it is so powerful when you can see the hand of God. It's just so awesome. So, so awesome. Thank you, Chad. Yes, amen. So, guys, and thank you, Tammy. Um, guys, this has been really awesome. Sorry for the the break up there and thank you for hanging in. I know this was a long one, but, um, I felt God was really nudging me to share all this information. And like I said last week, I just think it's really awesome because I don't feel like I need to prepare for this. I used to, I don't feel like I need to prepare. I, he just gives me the information. So all the glory goes to God and may you guys just have an awesome week. Um, strengthen the, your courage and your faith muscles and remember that those muscles are your strongest preparedness muscles because it all starts there for real. Everything else comes second hand. So uh, have a great day. Make your day a great day. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, 1030 Pacific Time, Facebook Live. And uh, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Wilderness. Guys, have a great week. 